This episode is supported by Squarespace. <laughs> it's a good thing everything on that plane was padded. I got my butt kicked in zero G. It was... This was the coolest thing I've ever done. This giant plane is gonna go up at 50 degrees and dive back down toward the earth. We're taking off. Here we go. I think I'm gonna pee my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm not as nervous as a normal. You're not? Just kidding. I'm irrationally terrified of normal flying. But they're really climbing at a high rate right now. Seatbelt sign is off, that means everybody is getting up and going around. Ah, ah, I think this is where we set up. We were on the zero G plane with Nova Space in France. Well, like in the air off the coast of France. The Vomit Comet, the microgravity meteor. That one was all me. I've been dreaming about this for three years. Ever since I made a video with Emily Calandrelli talking about how the zero G flight works, number one thing on my bucket list. And then Simone got to go and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna save it. Five years from now, it's gonna happen. And in the meantime, I'll just build up the yearning. And then bam, Bruce from the YouTube channel, Y Ponce, invited me and Derek Muller from Veritasium and said, if you can get yourselves to Bordeaux, France, you can come on the zero G flight. that got woken up in the middle of the night and is like, whose world is this? Okay, so the counting you heard 30, 40, 40 degrees. was the pilots telling each other the degrees that the plane was flying along its trajectory. And this was a training flight for pilots, which <laughs> I know how that sounds, but it just means the pilots are making sure they're flying these types of zero-g flights often enough. They were awesome pilots. Plus, it meant that there were only four of us instead of 10 with so much space. And there was a dancer on our flight and a startup testing VR goggles, which I got to try. There's so much to tell you. And I wasn't telling you a whole lot of words during the flight. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh wow. 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 Oh wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so you're not weightless the whole time because in order to feel weightless, the plane needs to either go up slowing down or dive down toward the earth, accelerating at the same rate gravity would accelerate your body if you were falling with no air resistance. And guess how long it would take you to fall from cruising altitude at 37,000 feet to the surface of the earth. While feeling weightless the whole time and with no air resistance, 48 seconds, that's it. So as a safer alternative, these planes go up for 11 seconds slowing down and then down for 11 seconds speeding up. So you're weightless for 22 seconds each parabola. It's the same phenomenon as going over the top of a roller coaster, but perfectly timed and balanced to match gravitational acceleration. But then they repeat that over and over and over for about five minutes of microgravity over the whole flight. We did 14 zero G or microgravity parabolas, plus one parabola of Mars gravity. I feel so strong. And two of moon gravity. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and no, it feels nothing like skydiving, which, to be honest, I've only done inside in a wind tunnel with VR goggles on, which is a whole bunch of other physics. Anyway, before the weightless part of the parabola, you go into a pull up and then a pull out that both press you into the floor. I can't believe that when we're climbing, the G forces will be more than in the space shuttle. Yeah. I'm surprised to know. Yeah. One point 
Eight G's. And during this part of the flight, you feel like someone piled a bunch of mattresses on top of your body. I like it. <laughs> no peas involved. Oh, and no peeing either. Well, I think that they had a contraption you could have used, but there were no bathrooms on the plane for obvious reasons. And they provide barf bags because... Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> but to answer your question, no, I did not get sick and neither did anyone else on this flight. Thank you, modern medicine, because we actually got a shot before the flight that's supposed to help you with motion sickness, but it makes your mouth really dry. Dry mouth already? No, no. Yeah, lots yeah. of dry mouth. And it made us super loopy. Is your head yeah, spinning? Yeah, my head's spinning. All of us, I feel a little bit weird. Yeah, I feel very weird. We feel weird. Maybe that enhanced the experience. So during the 1.8 Gs, you feel your jaw drooping, and it's impossible to lift your legs. And I tried jumping and it blew my mind. I thought it would feel, you know, hard to jump, but it didn't at all. Jumping was fine, but then it felt like the floor was coming up to meet my feet, which it kind of is because after you jump, then the floor is coming up faster than when you left the ground. It's just like when you try jumping at the bottom of an elevator when it's just starting to go up. And then the pilots say, injection and you hear this droning drop in the sound and that's where it's freaky. Because you're going from 1.8 Gs to no Gs and it feels like your stomach is coming out of your feet. This was, no joke, the most amazing experience of my life. Mm. But I'm a clumsy human, so combine that with a weightless environment and there were mishaps. I haven't even gotten to the ferrofluid. We brought some demos on the plane to try and see what would happen, but it's really hard to imagine what's gonna happen to things in zero G when you've never experienced it before. So I asked for Derek to spin a top on a, on a platform, but you can't spin something on something else when there's no gravity to pull it down. So he did spin it, but it just flew across the plane. And then there was our attempt to take a floating selfie. Also my brilliant idea. And the gyroscope. <gasps> that sad moment when he grabbed it and stopped it from spinning. <laughs> but my big grandiose plan was to show you guys some ferrofluid and I was imagining blob of ferrofluid and giant neodymium magnet and like whoosh, in zero gravity. And then they said no open ferrofluid because this is what happens to liquids in zero G. And with all of this worry and focus on the ferrofluid, this is the best footage I got. Okay. It didn't. Uh. I think that was the biggest difference in like super amazing idea to lamest execution I've ever had. But I got some other amazing shots of the gyroscope spinning in the same direction. And you can see here the gyroscope starts processing. And before the flight, we tied some helium balloons to the ground. What is gonna happen when we go zero G? So first, you, you've got a climbing part. I'm gonna guess that it comes up a little bit. I'm gonna guess it comes up a little bit. Wait, this test, we're gonna lose the tension of the rope. Yeah. So it's gonna go down and so then go down. Sure enough, they go downward because of the release tension in the string and they end up on the floor. So the ferrofluid was a huge failure. But this is the thing. When you're in such an unpredictable and unfamiliar and unusual environment, you'll have some epic failures, but also some fantastic discoveries. Like when I got invited to try the VR goggles during a last Hail Mary parabola. These guys have to deal with the fact that in a zero G environment, you're falling. VR headsets are not typically programmed to be constantly accelerating toward the ground at 9.81 meters per second squared. So these guys have to deal with that balance and the constant adjustments of microgravity and you're left with an incredible experience. Looking around at the space station and the northern lights and galaxies and back at earth all while feeling weightless. <sighs> oh my gosh. Wow. And then it was over. I want to say a huge thank you to Bruce because none of this would have happened without that dude. And thank you to Nova Space who made this an incredible experience by showing me just why we wear these so they can grab us and turn us leg side down. And now, I'm gonna tell you about the videos that Derek and Bruce made while you get to watch footage of me landing in the cockpit with the pilots. By the way, I'll put links to these videos in the description. But, but Bruce brought a TARDIS on the plane and he did a bunch of flips, so if you wanna watch a really entertaining French guy, check out Bruce's video. And Derek brought a lighter on the plane and was able to film a flame in zero G, so check that out. Both links are in the description. Hey, thank you for watching this video and happy physicsing.
Thanks to Squarespace for supporting this episode. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, Squarespace can help you make your next move. Squarespace provides an all-in-one platform with templates that allow you to easily set up a website. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever, which is great when you need to meticulously document your second journey to a zero-G flight. Start your free trial with Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code PHYSICS to get 10% off your first purchase. Thank you.